welcome to Coach Addy's comprehensive guide to spiking. We're gonna be focusing on, I think, the most important part of your spike, and that's the approach. In this video, you're gonna be learning the four-step approach. Throughout the video, I'm gonna tell you why that's so important and why I like coaching it so much more than the three-step. The reason why I think the four step is just absolutely busted is because it creates a guide between you and your setter on how to sync up with your tempo. It's very important we link our steps with the setter's touch. Yeah, something like that. When you do, it makes it really easy to communicate whether the set was too high, too low, or needs to change the trajectory, whether it should be flat or not. Yeah, probably about two balls lower. Without this guide, we have no reference point. So how do you know if it needs to go higher? How do you know if it needs to go lower? It really leveled up my offensive game and it made so much more sense. So let's learn the four step approach. Four step going. Just want a disclaimer. This is the first time I've done this many spikes in like over a year because I've been a bit injured. Ooh, please send your prayers up because tomorrow I'm going to be aching in bed. Coach Artie, if you're interested in becoming a better coach, consider joining my Patreon. And the higher you go up in the tiers, the more access you get. And if you join the highest tier, that's when we have monthly one-on-ones discussing your coaching and how you can get better. Hey guys, we're gonna be doing a spiking workshop, your comprehensive guide to spiking. Today we're focusing on our approach and footwork. <laughs> this is Anna. Say hello to Anna. We're gonna be teaching you guys the four step approach today. Three steps are for suckers, four step gang. The reason why I teach four step is because it directly links into your tempo runs, all right? It gives you a guide on what you're supposed to be doing and it sort of gives you a framework to be able to give feedback to your setter, give feedback to yourself. It's honestly overpowered. Everyone should do the four step. Throughout the video, I want you to take a look at my footwork. Every time the setter touches the ball, I want you to take a look at what step I am in in my approach. Am I on my first step, second step, or third step? This is what a first step looks like. Let's do it. Oh, sorry. Woo Have you paying attention at where I'm starting my approach as well? I'm not starting in the court. I'm a right-hander. On the left side, you start outside. It's gonna be a medium ball. Check what step I'm on in my approach. Ah! We're gonna do a shoot now. That is a very fast ball. So if you don't know what tempos are, there's high, there's medium, there's quick. We've already done the high one, we've done the medium one. We're gonna try and do a quick one. I'm gonna be on my third step of my approach. Okay. <laughs> Let's go! Let's... With our spiking, it's imperative that you know what a four step means. In my approach, this is what mine looks like because I'm right-handed. My right foot comes first, right, left, right, together. Very simple. If I was left-handed, my left foot would come first. So it would look like this, left, right, left, together. Look how I'm sort of blocking that off. Keep that in mind. The most important thing when you're going for your approach and when you're doing different types of tempos, high, medium, or quick, is what step you're on when the setter is touching the ball. As you saw before, when we were doing a really high ball, when Anna was touching the ball, I was on my first step of my approach or very close to my first step. When we were doing a medium ball, when Anna was touching the ball, one, two, I would have been on my second step. And for the shoot, for the really fast one, I would have been on my third step. One, two, three. That's what I love so much about this approach. It gives you a guide to what you're supposed to do. When I was taught how to hit a really high ball, my coach was like, oh, you gotta wait for the ball to hit the apex of the height, and that's when you start running. We don't need to do that. That's ridiculous. Right? It doesn't make sense because the set's different every single time. Here we have a guide. You also have a guide to say, oh, I was on my first step when you were touching the ball and it was a bit high. So can we put it a little shorter? All right, it gives you a tool to be able to talk with your setter. I remember when I was learning to spike, they were like, do you want a higher or lower? And I was like, well, I don't know. But now you've got a guide. If you were on your second step and you were running a medium ball and the setter was touching it, that means something messed up with the setter's height. We're gonna show you some middles now. Take a look at my footwork, all right? I'm probably gonna be on my second step when Anna's touching the ball, when the hands are like this. Let's see what it looks like. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> We're gonna do a quick now. I'm gonna be on my third step of my approach when Anna touches the ball. Hey. Something like that! 
All right, so this is what you should look like when you're doing a quick, and you'll see what step I'm on in my approach, in my first, second, or third. That's my third step, and I'd be coming through for an attack there. She was touching the ball, it's around that touch. Okay, for some people it might be, and I might be already halfway through a set while I'm on my third step, or I might be as soon as she touches the ball, I'm on my third step. That's how your spikes can vary to mine. All right, just as a tip, right-handers, when you're running on the right side, you run the line, all right? If you're left-handed, then you run on the angle. The reason is, is if I'm right-handed, I'm running the line, I twist here, I've got my line option, I can twist all the way here and get my cross option. If I'm right-handed and I run the angle like this, look, one, two, three, where's my line option? There's an antenna in the way, so I've only got cross, unless you've got a really extremely flexible shoulder and whip it this way. Would not recommend. Run the line. Let's just do it. If I was more athletic, I'd probably be able to nail that. Perfect. We're gonna break it down so you can take a look at what step I'm on when Anna's touching the ball. Okay, so we're gonna do it high, medium, and quick. High ball, I should be on my first step. Medium ball, I'm on my second, quick. I'm on my third. That's the same anywhere on the net, okay? Left side, middle, outside, pipe. It stays exactly the same. I don't run any faster. I just change what step I'm on when the set is touching the ball. Let's do a high ball. Anna's gonna catch this one. No matter where I am, first step when she's touching the ball. So this one's a medium ball. Take a look at what my feet are doing. Ball goes up when Anna touches it. Second step when she touches and she's going for that set. Look, my second step always is either on the attack line or behind the attack line. Let's do a quick tempo. I should be on my third step. And on one, two, thought I was late. <laughs> and we're doing it quick. One, two, three. Take a look, that's what step I am on when Anna's touching the ball. What I want you to take a look at now, we're actually gonna run a medium ball. Take a look at my footwork. Tell me which step is the biggest one in my approach. Is it my first step, is it my second step, is it my third or fourth? If you're watching closely, you would have probably noticed that in my approach, it gets smallest to biggest. So my first step is like a little baby step. That's a half step, bang. Second step's bigger, third step's big boy. And then we come in with the fourth one, bang, bang. I don't think I've done so many spiking reps ever. Ooh, I'm actually messed up right now. Doing my best for you guys. Hopefully you learned quite a bit from this video. If you did, please consider sharing it with a friend that might need this help as well. Then that this is a guide. It's not a law and set in stone. You can be a little flexible, but if you're using this guide, I think it unlocks a lot of potential within your game and it makes you a lot more flexible when you're moving around the court from outside to middle to opposite, even to back court. So, so cool how the four step unlocks all of this stuff. Because before when I was spiking, I'd have to try and change my speed, change, adjust everything. It's so much simpler now. I just need to adjust my start and hopefully be on the right step when the set is touching the ball. You get better when you practice, so go practice volleyball.